I know y'all got a lot of questions, but there ain't no point in trying to talk. Cause you ain't got no lungs. Headlander takes place in a 70s-esque sci-fi future where humans have plugged their consciousness into robots in order to become immortal. Players awaken as a frozen head when a disembodied voice, Earl, warns them of danger. Earl guides them off the ship and into a space station where an evil AI, Methuselah, is enslaving humanity. What Earl and Methuselah want is beyond our hero's knowledge, but being as this is a game, they follow along without question. The game certainly has a good vibe to it, and flying around as a head is pretty strange. However, unlike most of Double Fine's games, there isn't a lot of comedy to be had. It's a weird concept, and there are chuckles here and there, but primarily this is a different tale for them. That's not to say it's a bad thing, but I was a little crushed truthfully. Gameplay seems to have finally trumped their writing. This can best be described as a 2D metroidvania. It's the usual explore an environment, get new powers, and unlock passageways kind of thing. As a rocket-powered head, players can control enemies by either shooting or sucking off their heads. If that body is destroyed, the head will remain intact, but it won't last long in combat without a torso to protect it. Inhabiting soldiers, or shepherds, has more of a puzzle role to them. Shepherds are color-coded, which comes into play when going through gates. A red soldier is needed to get through a red door, an orange through an orange door, and well, you get the picture. Thankfully, higher colors can go backwards as well, so that orange can proceed through a red gate, but not vice versa. Sometimes it can be tricky to find the right color, only for that body to be destroyed right before you need it. While this can be frustrating, death in general is to the player's favor. Saves occur primarily every time one waltzes through an entryway. If one dies in that room, it'll just reset with a quick load. This alleviates frustration, making Headlander all about the experience and not the challenge. Not only that, but the map points to most everything if one can acquire a map droid. Unlike other Metroidvanias, players will rarely get lost. This hand-holding and lack of difficulty may be painful in itself for some, but I welcomed it. When a game respects my time, I respect it. Let's dial it back to the combat for a second. While the game primarily prods players to take control of the laser-wielding shepherds, you aren't completely loose as a head either. Collecting energy throughout the environment will accrue into points. These can be spent on passive and defensive abilities. Sucking heads off of robots is great, but dashing through them or using the head as a bomb is even cooler. That said, fighting isn't great to begin with. Aiming the laser and firing just doesn't feel right as a shepherd, and the head, while packed full of gadgets, dies too quickly to engage enemies in that context. I was stricken by its visuals the moment Headlander started, yet it wasn't until I was looking at screenshots had I noticed how artistically colorful the game is. Almost like a painting. Not only that, but they nail the retro cheesy look of early space operas. The humming synths in the score complete this homage. While there are a few glitches, it runs relatively smoothly and the loads, while infrequent, are super fast. It's short, but it rarely drags and the curiosity of exploring the next corridor is just too much to ignore. Headlander may not be Double Fine's funniest game, but it is one of their best video games, if that makes sense. Sure, the combat can be awkward and it leans on the easier side of things, but the rest of the game is fantastic. In a world filled with Metroidvanias, Headlander nails what makes them great while introducing new techniques to the genre as well. Play for the experience, not the challenge. Did you know that was a Reaction Examiner video? If you liked it, you should subscribe to me to keep up with everything that I'm doing. Also, if you have some other interests, like sex for example, check out To Mops, which is a comedy sex podcast thing wherein my best friend and I check out the weird and abnormal and the erotic. And of course you should support me on Patreon because hey, I want to make the channel better and I want your help to do so. Plus, if you want to check out my writing, check out Game Jerk, where I have archives and new stuff for all projects, okay? You can find all the stuff and more in the description with the links below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.